Great hey, to meet William. you both. Hi, William. Nice to meet you. Congratulations on this. Like I just finished the first season and really tremendous work from both of you. So oh, wow. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. My pleasure. You know, I feel like, you know, I've been a fan of this character, you know, since I was in high school. Um, Morpheus in specific. And both of your characters, obviously, wonderful. But you know, Morpheus as a character is such he's complex. You know, he's it he's fascinating, he's enigmatic, he's a rat bastard, he's incredibly empathetic and weak and relatable while also possessing tremendous strength. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How did you wrap your head around all of that? And what did you ultimately kind of ultimately like settle on in terms of understanding him that maybe it took a while to to really get to? I mean, so the first point would be that uh, initially I was lost. I, I didn't, I, I think you're absolutely right. He, he there is an extraordinary breadth of expression inside of him. Uh, and it, it's difficult to, you know, what, what's amazing about Sandman as a whole is it, it's this enormous world in which you spend so much time with him that his complexity only increases. And as a fan of, of it, as you are, um, you know, I was aware of the, all the directions that he goes in. Um, and so to, I think I had to kind of break it back to the beginning, which is what is it that he does? What is his responsibility? And that is, he contains within him the collective unconsciousness of the universe, um, our dreams, our fears, and our fantasies. And that in doing so, he knows how each and every one of us feels, right? And therefore, the first thing is that that does create a quality of empathy and must do. But it's such a kind of um, uh, unsafe, dangerous um, entity, unconsciousness, that he it, it requires an exquisite discipline to contain it. Um, and so I think the kind of withheld, isolated, closed off um, creature that we're presented with is born of having to hold that feeling to all together because the consequences of not doing so would be catastrophic. Absolutely. I mean, for, for both of you, what were the conversations like that you had with, with Neil and Alan that kind of helped you get into this a bit more that maybe weren't there yourselves? Like, how, how did you pull things out as a, as a, as a group? Um, I mean, the first, the first thing, to be honest, the first questions I had for Neil were, what does he look like? And what does he sound like? Which may sound counterintuitive because it, it, there are a litany of um, images of him in these books, but we started doing camera tests and again as a fan all i wanted to do was literally realize the 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 images that were in the in the graphic novels and so uh we painted my skin as white as a4 paper we put black contact lenses in my eyes i had wild huge hair um and the extraordinary um costumes made by sarah arthur and um and it was perfect it was a perfect representation but the thing that neil said was that if morpheus walks down the streets of new york or london no one should notice him mm -hmm. uh, perhaps they feel a presence but no one should, he should blend in with all humanity um and so i would walk down the corridors of shepparton and people would be like whoa like what are you wearing you look like uh whatever um and so it didn't work um and so it took a long time. It took multiple camera tests to kind of to get to a place where Neil was like, Tom, you look sickly pale anyway. Your hair is always messy and um, I can see the cosmos in your eyes. So, um, no, um, uh, and then the second thing was, what does it was he sound like? Because, you know, the, the one thing that, you know, that, that like, I don't know about you, but when I see those the white um, capital letters in the in the black um, speech bubbles for Morpheus. I do hear something. It does, they, 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 there's there's a power to them, um, mm -hmm. and Neil was very specific and said that he is the voice inside of your head. He is the voice that invites you to sleep 
and that guides you through your dreams. And that was really helpful because, you know, at the beginning I was like, he should be Terminator. <laughs> um, uh, and so like, yeah, that snapped me out of that one. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, Gina? Uh, I think it was very different for me than Tom because he is Morpheus. Um, for me, I think it was a lot more of, you know, things like costume. It's very close to the um, the comic, like mm. very, very close. Uh, ears, everything. For me, I think it was just really leaning into the essence of who Lucienne is. So Neil and Alan talked about that a lot. You know, she's she's presided over the dreaming whilst Morpheus has been captured. She's tried to keep this thing intact you know she has a deep compassion for him she loves him she loves the realm what's important about it so I think always staying grounded in that truth and the truth of this relationship and how special it is and to preserve that and to care for him you know he's been captured for you know a century how does that affect a being his powers were stolen he was enclosed it it changes you, you know? So I think it's just about grounding, I, for me anyway, it was about grounding myself in that truth. And I mean, it sounds so actually like, oh, you know, but just reacting and being present and being in the moment and being in that world. And, you know, I think, yes, it is fantasy. It's incredible. But what I love about this, what I love about Sandman, and as someone who has come to it new, I'd heard about it, but, you know, I'm not like you guys. And it's just the humanity and how it talks about the human condition. And that's why every episode I've watched, I'm like, why am I crying? You know, it could be the scariest thing, but it just talks, I, I think it just talks to everyone about every emotion, every feeling, every, and it makes you question a lot. It makes you question. Mm. And yeah, so I think I went off on a tangent there, didn't I? But yeah. Oh, no, it's wonderful. I mean, we have to wrap, but I mean, I do love that, you know, the ways that this is able to kind of, grapple with the way change is happening and these two characters do that together in a really beautiful way yeah. and i loved your work here i can't wait to see it continue in future seasons and it was great meeting you both Love oh, it. thank you so much thank you very much thank you.